After flipping my courses in 2013 and 2014, I wanted to know if the flip format worked better. I unpacked that question using the Guski Evaluation Framework. The Guski Evaluation Framework has five levels. The first one looks at participants' reactions. The second one, their learning. Third is the organizational support and change. Fourth is the use of new knowledge and skills. And five are the learning outcomes. Here are the research questions that I specifically aligned with each of these evaluation levels. So what were students' reactions to the flip format? Did participants acquire the intended knowledge and skills? How was implementation advocated, facilitated, and supported, if at all? What resources were made available, if any? And how were successes recognized and shared, if at all? I didn't address evaluation level four in this study. At level five, I asked, how did the change affect student performance or achievement? And how did the change affect the withdrawal rate? In short, the flip courses that I studied had higher grades, higher student satisfaction, lower withdrawal rates, and lower failure rates compared with traditional classroom models. Similar results have been found by the other researchers listed below. To look into research question one, what were students' reactions? I looked at course evaluations, which were anonymous, and I looked at my course evaluations on three key statements. Across the board in the flip courses, my course evaluations were higher, which is a reflection of students' higher satisfaction in those courses. I also looked at whether participants had achieved the attended learning outcomes by comparing a final exam before the change and after the change. The median score in the flip course was higher than in the active lecture. Now those exams were identical exams. The students had never seen the questions before. They had never been released to the students. It was the same instructor in both courses. The results were statistically significant with a small effect size. Next, I investigated whether implementation was advocated, facilitated, and supported. The support is essential, and in our institution, each professor is free to choose their pedagogical approach, so I was free to try. The teaching and learning service provided support in the way of multimedia technicians, the active learning classroom facilities and technicians, and members of the TLSS were available for pedagogical strategy discussions. What about sufficient resources? Professional production support requires money, as does evaluation of a method. There was sufficient money to do this, but just barely. This is an area that could definitely be improved. And were successes recognized and shared? Certainly successes were recognized through an invitation to the presentation of the Board of Governors, conferences and media recognition, as well as a publication on the structure and evaluation of the method. I also compared course grades between Organic Chemistry 1 and 2 flip courses compared to earlier versions of these courses. The course grades were higher in the flip courses. These results were statistically significant with small effect sizes. Perhaps the most significant results were in the changes in failure and withdrawal rates. There were lower failure and withdrawal rates in the Organic Chemistry 1 and Organic Chemistry 2 flip courses when compared with earlier iterations of the course, both of courses taught by myself and by others. While we can't draw a causal link between these findings and the flip course structure, these findings are indicators that we're moving in a direction that will benefit students, and the possibilities are exciting.